Hello everybody. Toy to Otago Settlers Museum is well known for its portrait gallery. While most of the faces that stare down at you are photographs, there are some that are painted portraits. We've talked about some of these in previous episodes of Talking Pictures, but today we're going to look at some painted portraits that are currently in storage rather than up on the walls. And we're going to start with this hand-coloured photograph of William Winton, who arrived along with his wife Jean and their five children on the Philip Lang in 1848. A couple of weeks after the ship had arrived at Port Chalmers, Jean, who was still confined on board the ship, gave birth to child number six. Three more children were born in New Zealand in the years that followed, prior to Jean's passing away in 1859. Later that year, William remarried, and this is second wife, Rabina, with whom William had several more children in the 1860s, to add to the brood he and Jean had produced in the 1830s, 40s and 50s. The portrait of William, who died in 1879, appears to be a photograph that was likely coloured many years after his death. It's marked R. Ray's Studio, which suggests it was coloured at a portrait painting business run by Robert Ray and his brother Albert in Dunedin in the early 20th century, prior to the First World War. The portrait of Rabina is signed R. Harrison and is dated 1904. So it also appears to have been based on a photograph that was retouched long after her death in 1893. We'll probably come across these two artists Robert Ray and Robert Harrison, again in future episodes. The Bars were another family that came out on the Philip Lang in 1848. John Barr, the Paisley weaver who had become known for weaving the first locally made cloth in Dunedin in 1853, his wife Elizabeth, and their six Scottish born children. William here was the eldest of those children, aged 16 at the time. He'd become a farmer in Kaikoura Valley and later at Mahino and was the first mayor of the borough of Mornington when it formed in 1877. In 1854, he married Mary Speed. And over the following 20 years, William and Marjorie, as she was more often known, had a dozen children together, although not all survived into adulthood. Five months or so after the arrival of the Wintons and the Bars on the Philip Lang, John Sidey arrived on the Blundell John initially became a storekeeper here, but is usually remembered for establishing Kostorfen, or Korstofen as we often pronounce it here, the property which would later give its name to a whole suburb of Dunedin. This portrait of John Sidey is signed M. Hartley, so it was either by Margaret Hartley or her younger sister Mary. After Margaret showed great promise at the Dunedin School of Art, the Hartley family moved to England so she could continue to develop her talent there. After the family's return in the 1890s, Mary also developed a reputation as a painter. There's a date on the painting, but it's difficult to decipher, perhaps 1908 or 9, by which time John would have been around 85. He died in 1915, aged 92. This portrait of John's wife Joanna, whom he married in 1858, is by a different Dunedin-born artist. It's signed K. L. Salmond. Kathleen Lucy Salmond, who was born in Dunedin in 1895, was the eldest daughter of Dunedin architect Lewis Salmond. Like Margaret Hartley before her, she studied at the Dunedin School of Art, then headed off to England for further study before returning to Dunedin. Her painting of Joanna Sidey, who died in 1925, aged 89, is undated and was donated to the museum in 1931. This next couple, the McNichols, brought their family to Otago on the Ajax, which arrived here at the beginning of 1849. Donald worked for surveyor Charles Kettle for a time and then on the Burns family farm at Grant's Braes. It's said that at Grant Sprays, he once tasked a man with shearing a sheep. The man spent all morning shearing it, and by the time he finished, the sheep was found to be dead. 
1851, Donald McNichol helped gather information for a census. And a few years later, by which time he'd taken up farming in the Palmerston district, he acted as census taker again up there. That involved him walking all the way to Kurau and back and visiting each house in between. Clearly, he was a man of fine physique and he lived to the ripe old age of 98. That's all we've got time for today. Join us again next time for Settlers in Store Volume 2. See you then, and thanks for watching.